you have the worst setup for problem because you will park your unit if it's not parked inside you're parking it outside there's rain there's ice puddles just like the beautiful roads of ohio indiana and new york and all those roads where we got to hang on to our seat belt it's not protect us it's just to be able to, to stay put in the car those roads are bad this is what it does to your rv same thing as much as water will blow the black top and that's why we got holes everywhere it's the same thing with your roof and everywhere around your top of your windows, top of your slide trims that are coming down in your wall, your four corners, the belt trim. People who don't follow us, by the way, people in the back that are late, <laughs> we're blue walks on the run. So if ever you watch some of our video, you'll understand why we do what we do. A lot of you came in after the beginning, so sorry for the front row. Welcome to the front row, but you in the back, I'm gonna quickly tell you where Blue Ox came from because so often people say, are you the tow hitch? No, we are not the tow hitch. We've had our name for 23 years. Pierre and I used to manufacture log loader trailers. He was the mind behind the design and I sold steel and hydraulics to men all over the United States. So trailers, axles, you know those frame brakes and welds and stuff that's going on. We know all about that stuff. So we are RV inspectors. We have a YouTube channel. If you've never seen it, I really recommend that you go to YouTube, click on Blue Ox on the Run. Give us three videos, watch three videos. If you don't like us, delete us. But I think in three videos, you will gain one, two, three tips, maybe even get a laugh because sometimes we're funny. Sometimes we're not, but we are pretty serious and we have a lot to share with you. We're glad that everybody keeps coming in. We're going to bring up Bruce, Director of Courseware and Training. Uh, quick uh, little background of uh, my auto technician for 45 years, uh, worked with General Motors. Over the years, working in cars and stuff kind of gets old and decided I needed a change. So I went to training for RV repairs and RV inspections. I haven't gone back. My wife and I sold everything and are 100% on the road. So we, for two years, almost two years now we've been on the road. There's so many things that you need to maintain in an RV. I can only go over a couple of those things. We were talking about roofs um, and different sealants. Super important that you know what sealants to use for you do-it-yourselfers. Okay? Um, there's non-sagging and there's self-leveling okay on flat surfaces we're using a self-leveling or on a corner we're using a non-sag and the reason is because if you put the self-leveling it's going to continue down 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 okay we want to make that look really good um the type of roof you have and the manufacturer of the rv are going to determine what brand of product to use okay most of us know die core very common um a lot of us may not know Alpha. Any grand design owners, Alpha is what you use on your roof. I know that. I'm a grand design owner. Uh, how many grand design owners do we have here? I see four, six. That's, okay, how many How many are not admitting to it? <laughs> so those of you that are grand design owners, like myself, uh, now you know Alpha is what you can use on the roof on those. Because of the manufacturer saying that's what you need to use. Otherwise, your warranty will be void on that roof. So, to make sure you know what product is supposed to go on your roof before you install that product. We're talking about the um, well, the belt molding. The type of sealant that you're going to use is going to most likely be ProFlex RV. This is a form of silicone, water-based, but what's nice, and if you don't know how to apply this, you do a super thin line of it. You wet, wet your finger and slowly run your finger across that, and it'll be perfectly beautiful. As long as it's wet, after you set it on there, finger wet, apply some water. I use glass cleaner a lot, just, and it wipes right off. You have no problem with it. Beautiful, beautiful job. The, the sealant, before you put it back in, do you... 
want it cleaned and take out the old sealant, or what do you what would be the way to do that? Thank you for asking. The question is obviously, do we clean it or do we dig it out? Um, what we're looking for are cracks and gaps in the ceiling. Okay, I wouldn't recommend digging it all out. I would recommend if you have a spot that is that is missing or is cracked, go ahead and scrape out the cracked stuff if you can. If not, at least clean it and follow up with alcohol. Okay, just just to dry it out, make it clean, and then apply it. Otherwise. It turns into a big job if you go the other way. But I'm talking about just maintenance, so it's going to be the smaller spots that you want to take care of. Okay. A lot of the older units, you get a discoloration of the sealant. Um, so you, what was once clear now is more of discolored yellow. Okay, and that's that's what the question is. What do we do with that? You can clean it, soap and water. Usually the best thing, a little bit of elbow grease on them. I don't recommend using a lot of products. You know, Dawn just soap is great. It does work great. Um, there's some products you can pick up at the dollar store. Everybody knows about awesome, apparently. So yeah, use that. I use it on the roof. It does a great job, okay? And of course, when you're gonna apply after that, if you're going to apply, I do highly recommend that you use an alcohol of some sort of, not Jack Daniels, but you know, <laughs> don't waste that. <laughs> so in follow up, because um, we're not gonna cover a whole bunch of things, but uh, he was talking about access and using this tool, okay? This is just basically a laser infrared temperature measuring device, okay? You're gonna point and shoot. When you're on the road, the best answer is when you come to a stop, fuel up, go to the back, go to all four wheels, and just shoot right at the center of it. Each one of them. The one that is different by more than 10, 20 degrees, you're gonna go, what's going on? Okay. We're looking basically for even temperatures. Chances are that they're not all going to be hot. They're not all going to be cold. You've driven the same distance with all four tires. They should be roughly the same temperature. So if we get a variation of 10 degrees in them, I'm not worried about it. You start getting a hot one, you're going to know it. Okay. You're going to be checking. That, that'll give you an indication that either you have a wheel bearing failure or you have a brake failure that might be dragging a little bit. And you can do the same thing on the tires, shooting the, we all have tire temperature gauges now and tire pressure gauges, you know, I'm sure everybody's using those. If you're not, please do. <laughs> it's an ounce of prevention. And while I'm on tires, tire life, five to six years, okay? So if you don't know how to check the tire age, please come up and ask when we're all set here. I'd love to answer any of those questions. So on the tires, on the sidewall, would it be either on the inside or the outside? I love it when it's on the outside. There's a DOT date code. It's usually four digits. And let's say that digit is 0424. Okay, the first two digits is the month. The second two digits is the year of production. Okay? The year is what I look at closest. So it's the last two. But five to six years is the oldest you want these tires to run. And I know we all think these tires are beautiful there's treads great on them i'm not replacing these five to six years you're gonna have that first blow out and then you're gonna go i should have done something close so five to six years but what if i only use it on the weekends and i don't really have that many miles on it it does not matter that tire's been sitting it doesn't necessarily even have to be in the sun that rubber is going to break down over time and it will fail on you may not be right away, but I guarantee you. And here's the other thing. If you do have a blowout and you haven't checked your tire dates, look at the date on the rest of your tires and see where it falls. Because if you don't replace all four, you're going to be up, up the road. It's going to happen again. And again. I've seen people with two blowouts on the same trip. And then they're going to have a second spare. So what do you do? So maintaining the tires, checking the dates on it, tire pressure, tire pressure gauge, um, you know, the tire pressure monitor system is a, I, those are a must. Maintenance wise, water heaters should be flushed. Everybody should flush them at least once a year. Okay. Uh, if you don't know about that, we can help you with that. Well, that doesn't matter. He said with an anode rod. Anode rod should be checked and replaced as necessary. If you're not familiar with that, I'd like to go into detail with that, but we don't have a lot of time to do that. The question was, what brand of tire would I go with? Um, I don't cheap out on tires. 
tires are something I don't like to have a failure with. So buy your tires. Don't forget the spare tire. I don't care what tire you buy. Kinda. Uh, <laughs> Just say it. So <laughs> I I run Coopers on mine, okay. but I'm I'm a load rage range age. These tires are indestructible. Okay, but they're gonna cost me a fortune after six years. So um, same thing with coaches. You know, Michelin's fantastic on coaches. You don't see Michelin's on Toby Hines, Coopers. Um, you see Saloons. Uh, you see Goodyears. So when I see Firestone's got some tires out. You know. I prefer to buy a brand name where you can get tires. You know, where, where is it easiest to find a replacement tire? Like even if you had a blowout because the tire went bad, you hit something. You know, can you match that tire up? Wants to know about the anode rod. The anode rod, in case those of you that don't know what an anode rod is, that is a sacrificial piece of metal tubing, basically a pipe that fits inside a water heater that is made of steel. A lot of you have. I'm going to call it their aluminum tanks, which is going to be an uh, Atwood Dometic water heater. Okay, if you have a Truma or something like that, you're not going to have this. Um, the Atwood Dometic does not use an anode rod because it is an aluminum tank. The Suburban is the most popular, and that uses an anode rod because it is a metal tank that is ceramic lined. It's time to change the anode rod. He didn't drain anything, right, Larry? We told him to. We told him to, and it went all, all over our food. I ate the whole buffet, and all we could do was do that, <gasps> and then laugh. I mean, we laughed our assets off. <laughs> that was good, right, honey? And okay, so we got a giveaway. So I'm just wondering who's paying attention. What does this test? Go ahead, she's going to grab it. No, they're specifically testing for... I heard heat right there. So, heat, right? Am I right? Heat, 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 Temperature is heat. Temperature is heat. If you don't think so, we've got fans up here because it's hot. So come on up and get your prize, whatever prize you want. Now I'm going to see what he's leaving behind. Look at you, aren't you cute? He's checking, he's checking. We're going to do question and answers at the end. If you're all good for that, we're good for that. Wow, there's a lot of good stuff up here. Look at that. You know what he left? I designed this t-shirt, right? For those in the back that didn't come when I said, you got to check out our YouTube channel, our slogan at the end, from the very first beginning, it's not about the destination, it's all about the journey. We've got palm trees, we've got mountains, there you go. Well, since you feel that bad about the t-shirt, I'll take it. <laughs> I want to thank somebody though. Talmadge, thank you and Ashante for inviting us. They're great friends of ours. We love hanging out with them. And they invited us to come here and talk. And at first I'm thinking, who wants to hear us? You! Thanks for coming. We appreciate that. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So the next person we're going to introduce is Jeff. And he is a director of a lot of things. And he's going to tell you like some of our global development in Dubai, right? So, are the inspections in Dubai? So, Jeff, come on up. All right, so they got you crawling around on the floor trying to fix your RV in the middle of the rain and the snow. I'm going to take you all the way back in time. So, there was a time for each and every one of you here that you asked your significant other, what do you think about buying an RV? <laughs> And the other person looked at you like you had a horn growing out of the middle of your head. Now, they're not for everybody, but read those really, really carefully. If they tell you you got to make a decision right now, 
I'm telling you, with a run, Forrest, run. Because you're going to be taken for a ride you don't like. Now, to give you a little bit of background about myself, 33 years in aviation, I was a heavy maintenance airworthiness test pilot, I was a pilot, I was a manager, so I am very mechanically inclined. But there was a time that when my wife and I were thinking about buying something, I realized it's not an airplane that I'm dealing with. And I don't know what I don't know. And the only way I'm going to protect that investment, and again, like Pierre said, whether it's 50000 80000 or 250000 the only way I'm going to protect that investment is to make sure I'm buying the right vehicle at the right price. So I started going on the internet and I started interviewing every single RV inspector I can get my hands on. And I called all over the country because I didn't know where we were going to buy ours from. And I talked to them, they all kind of said the same thing. Well, you need to check this out, you need to check that out so that you know what it is. Well, when I got to Laurel and Pierre, they basically were completely different. Their approach was they want to give me all the tools necessary so that when I do decide to buy an RV, I know exactly what it needs and exactly what value it has to it. So when I asked them, well, how long is it going to take? I didn't get the four hours that everybody else told me. I got eight to 10 hours. And I said, well, is that eight to 10 hours between the two of you, meaning each of you gonna work four? And they go, oh no, that's eight to 10 hours for each of us. So the difference to me was right there. They are putting the time in to check that vehicle from bumper to bumper, from top to bottom. The report that they built at the end was 332 pages, over 600 pictures, descriptions about everything they found, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When it was all said and done, I was able to generate a repair list. All the items that I felt had to be repaired. Some of those items were just normal wear and tear items that you're going to find no matter what. And some of those items were more major than not. At the end, I called around to every place I could think of all around the country, and I got four and five prices to fix every one of those things. I averaged those prices. I came up with $28,500 worth of repairs. I went back to the person that we were buying from. We were lucky. We bought from a private individual, not any one of those dealerships. I went back to them and I said, here's a list of everything this thing needs. It's not me saying it, it's them saying it. If you want to sell yours, here's the price I'm willing to offer you. We went back and forth and back and forth, but he kept coming down to my line in the sand. And when it was all done, I paid what I paid for that vehicle and I was happy I got it for what I got it for. The moral of that story is, leave the emotion out of what you're buying. It is very easy to think about all the things you're gonna do to this thing and forget the reason why you're there. You're making a huge financial decision and you cannot go at that like, like a whim. You actually have to think about this, that you're making a mistake. You're buying something that is devaluing every day you use it. Yes, you can maintain it, to the best possible ability, but it's worth less today than it was yesterday. So, take your time and go through it and understand that you need an inspection. You do not know what you do not know. And I don't care how many years or how many, how many years or how mechanical you are, you do not know the technology that is built behind this, especially if you're trading in yours and then thinking about moving on to something else. The technology in yours is different than the technology in the new one. Working. The technology is different, so these people keep up with every single new option that's out there. And so when you're looking at this pretty little screen, they know how it operates. They spend the time to make sure it's working. And if you think, well, I've owned an RV for so many years, I know how to do this, that's a mistake you're going to pay for. And the value what they give you is going to be worth it, hands down. We, I used that entire report. I did not give it to them, but I used that report so they understood that I'm not the one saying this. I hired people that know what they're doing that is telling me what it is. Now, that doesn't mean they were going to come down and meet me at that price, but he had to decide, did he want somebody else looking at this and coming up with the same issues? So it is a negotiation tool, so when you think about it, Whatever money I paid for them to come take care of that inspection, I got it back.
and I've owned it now, we, my wife and I have owned it since August of last year, and it has been flawless. We brought it back to Cummings for the engine, Freightliner for the chassis, and we own a Newmar, brought it to Newmar, and they went through everything. So right now, I sit here with what I consider to be, and I would have let Laurel and Pierre tell you, a pristine 2014 Dutch Star. What about reselling it? Well, that's also a great point. That was my wife. She said, what about reselling it? I have told Laurel and Pierre that there will be that day that we either want to get out of the business or maybe upgrade to something else. They will come back and inspect my vehicle like someone else is purchasing it so that I know what I'm in for and maybe those things would get repaired. It is the best way that you can bring the most value to what you're trying to sell. Because no matter what, it is wearing out. You're driving a house down the road and trying to shake it into pieces. So there are things that are gonna need continuous work. I don't care if it's a travel trailer or a Prevo. You are tearing it apart by driving it down the road. Just like Pierre said, you got roads out there that loosen your teeth. Match what it's doing to your RV. We're going to do um, other giveaways, and but one thing I want to say first is that the one thing that Pierre and I strive to do when we talk to our customers, we want to make sure that they feel comfortable with us. We become friends. We become family. We become friends for life if they choose. When they're sick of us, they can stop calling us, but we'll always be there for them, and we just love what we do but we're also there to prevent them from buying a money pit so we're going to as Pierre always says in our videos he's there to rip it apart not literally rip it apart but we're touching everything there's nothing on the inside of that RV that I don't touch try there's nothing on the outside that he doesn't touch he touches everything so people can feel really confident in knowing can we make a mistake well yeah just like the ones that built it. They made some big mistakes. And we inspect a lot of brand new that the things we find is shocking. And we just can't even believe it. If you watch some of our videos, you'll see I stick my arm out the top of a slide. Slide's completely, completely out. But he could hear me talking in the bedroom. My daughter called me. And he's like, what is going on? I got on the ladder step ladder and I could stick my arm completely out. An anaconda could come through there. I'm sorry, I don't like snakes. Worse if it was spiders. But, so the things that we find, it is shocking. So everyone can think, oh, but I'm buying new. I don't need an inspection. Yes, you do. And negotiate the price. So to your answer, it doesn't matter what you pay. You negotiate. And if you don't know how to negotiate, take your brother, your sister-in-law, whoever that does, and you negotiate the price of your inspection so that it's free. And the things that we find, trust me, you're going to be able to dicker and do never sign on the dotted line until everything is fixed because they don't remember you. You and oh, huge. So we had a we had a subscriber that just had to share with us that she had given a non-refundable $20,000 deposit and she did not want that RV. She lost. Do not ever sign for a non-refundable. What the heck do they need your money for? You need your money. You've earned it, and you're going into this investment that you've been saving forever. I don't care if it's 20,000 or if it's 650,000. That's your money, and that's a lot of money. So make sure you don't let them win. You win. All right, I want to bring the topic because it's clear. We had you with your sunglasses. Listen to me. Stop talking to your friend. No. I'm kidding. And, and to your point too, sir. I understand when you ask, okay, how much is an inspection? So let me kind of help you out here. You could go to Lemon Squad. Okay, that's a legitimate business that is useless for inspection for cars. And all of a sudden they decide to do RVs or boats. They don't have a clue what they're doing. They charge $450 for an inspection. They're there for an hour and a half. We push them out of inspections more than once. The person there, we don't know who they are, we don't know what they look for, and then I'm thinking, okay, well, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm an inspector, I'm doing this or this. An inspector? Yeah, I'm about to don't worry. Holy crap, you're done? So if they charge 450 bucks an hour, I should be able to charge at least 5,800. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. It's like, are you kidding me? 
If you're smart, you know how to negotiate. This inspection will actually cost you absolutely nothing. Sometimes we don't make sense because we justify what we want. Meaning, no, I want a pickup because I like to have a pickup. My wife doesn't want me to have a pickup. Now I'm going to be able to have a pickup. And I'm going to make her believe that now I can buy an RV that I want. And now you bought a three-quarter ton. You're screwed. You're buying this too big of a fifth wheel. Oh, honey, now I gotta get a bigger truck. It's all a matter of perspective. What works for you, what makes you feel good, to answer your question directly, because I've hauled trailers all my life, for me, the easiest way for somebody who's not used to haul a unit, which a lot of you have traveled trailers, because I've seen this in this camera, a fifth wheel is way easier to manage than a travel trailer. And I know you all say, wow, geez, this is big here. I mean, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. The truck will take care of the weight. The problem you have with a travel trailer, you're going to sway. Listen, and I'm not saying that. Be careful. All of you are safe out there. I want you to stay safe on the trail. But we've witnessed it personally more than once. And I'll tell my wife, look at that trailer. We're going to lose it. And she's witnessed that more than once. So I feel bad for people who had their boat, their canoe, their ice maker, their golf cart, the two bikes, the canoe on the top, all the ice pack in the back, the pickup, and all of a sudden it's all on the side of the road. They were leaving for vacation for two weeks. Well, there goes the end of the vacation and maybe your life. Load capacity, carrying capacity in a travel trailer is, it's a science. You've got to think. So you cannot put your stuff just like a friend of ours. Everything in the front has got to go in the axle and in the back. You, you, those are things you've got to learn to balance your trailer. So, like the airplane, same thing that we ask people. Okay, how Jeff used to have to ask people like we do for RVs. Where do you want to go? How many people are you taking? How often are you going to use it? These are the things that you kind of got to figure out because the more you're going to use it, the further you're going to go, the more you're going to need. That's not only the stuff you're putting inside, but that's the size of the unit you're going to buy. So to his point, are you buying too big because your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend is saying, oh, geez, I want that 34 footer. Okay, do you need this? No, but I like it. Well, okay, well, maybe it's time to go from a travel trailer to a fifth wheel. You, you've got to think through. So hopefully a lot of YouTubers out there can help you figure that one out. Uh, we did the best we could so far. And if you don't have any more questions, well, we'll leave it at that. Larry, not again. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got a suggestion. If you're buying from a dealer and you got a list of things that's wrong with it, do not drive that vehicle off the lot until that lot, I mean, that list is complete. They'll tell you, oh, we'll take it and we'll get to it later, and later never come. So make sure everything gets fulfilled on that list before you take it out. Thank you. Slides or no slides? Okay, so everybody's laughing. Slides. Do we have Airstream owner here? We have Airstream owner here. No Airstream there's no substitution for real estate. No substitution for real estate. Out, you've got room to move This around. is a summer camp. When you park somewhere and your house is opening, this is what we all want. Bigger is better to the girl's point. I get that part, not the other one. But that one on an RV, I get it. Yes, there might be less problem, but you're, for instance, we do Airstream. Do you know that an international, that's about 33 foot long Airstream, is almost $300,000? And that's a fuselage. You live in a fuselage. I mean, I understand, and, and some people do, and they haul it with a Tesla. So I, I, I get that part. But <laughs> so to the point of your question, you know, it's, I don't know, it, it's a choice, but I think everyone of us here, we want to slide. And, and, and by the way, but a lot of time when we do inspection, that's what we tell people. Are you willing to do this? Because you will be best served there because your dealer is not knowledgeable enough to take care of this issue. If this one is a little bit too big, I'm gonna open the wall, take out the slide, fix the H-frame where your Schwinn tech goes. He can do that. But you don't even go to a dealership. You call guys like him that actually knows what they're doing. That's the hard part. Do we go to dealership? Personally, I never do. Wherever I buy, I never go back there, ever. I'll hire a tech on the road. If I can't do it myself and I don't have time, I'll hire a tech that I get to know that makes sense, that is smart, I can see he's intelligent, and he doesn't take me for a sucker. 
those are the people I want on my side. Yes, they cost me more. But even if I paid him 500 bucks for half a day to fix my problem, if I bring it back to the dealership because they trust you, trust me, they tell you. Dwayne, don't they tell you? Oh, it's under warranty. Don't, don't worry. Come back. Come back? From North Carolina to Indiana to drop it there for two weeks going to an hotel. Okay, how much is this costing yet? At, at the end of the game, it becomes ridiculous. So that's why for me, I see it differently. We live full time, so I will not go back to a dealership. That's how I feel. And to finish that, what we say on, or what he says when he's doing slides, so many times we pull the slides out and that seal stays in. So he says, tuck and roll. You gotta pull those seals out because if you don't, where's the water gonna go? Right down and in, right? So you don't want to rot your floor, your walls. To her point, today when you go back to your RV, hopefully you'll go back for lunchtime. No, let's go check them all. <laughs> Thank you. So that's that's the point. I know we don't think about this because oh, we should do it on its own. When your slide comes out, no, they don't come out all the way, and it's rubber. If it was used to be halfway, this we call that a wiper seal on your box, and it goes back in. To her point, water comes in, goes back, goes in back. That goes right in the floor. Remember, this is a box on rubber. So if those rubber are not doing what they're supposed to do, if you wonder, hmm, what wonder if the water can go there. And like all your swing tech system, all of you that have those swing tech slide out, that little track at the end that goes into the wall, water can go there. So if it's not plugged at the end by your slide out, you're gonna put seal in there because that water goes in the track, goes right back inside the floor. Trying to put a value in your maintenance. This is another thing about maintenance. Make sure your seal are doing what they're supposed to do because you might have a surprise if you want to sell that in three years or or somebody wants to buy your unit and they actually call one of the Blue Ox and Doors team, they might find what you didn't do for the last three years. So if you have a problem with your unit, maintain it people. That's the point of this seminar or whatever. Hopefully we taught you something and if there's any more questions, we're going to release you. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. We really appreciate it. When you see us around the park, ask us questions, say hi. If you do subscribe and you don't want to comment, just put C4BO. Comment for Blue Ox. That's all you got to do. Have so much fun. See you on the dance floor tonight. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey.